What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the My First Deal podcast, episode number two. Today, we have Andre Carvalho. We go over his first deal, of course, but keep watching because he has some great advice about how to follow up with sellers, what to avoid when choosing a CRM, and how commitment is the difference between standing on the sidelines and doing multiple deals a month. Andre and his partner, Tyler, are doing deals in Columbus, Georgia, and soon to be Jacksonville, Florida. So make sure you guys hit them up with any deals that you might have. Really quick, before before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We made this channel to document our journey from total beginner to financially free, hopefully inspiring you to get started today. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it. Thank you for having me, Alex. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Um, I know your time is precious. We always, as investors, forget to take any time off. So I appreciate you giving me this time on a Sunday. Um, why don't you um, just start off, introduce yourself, let people know kind of how you got into real estate investing, um, paint a picture, what your life was like before, and then kind of what made you decide to get into real estate investing? Yeah, sure. So uh, I actually started learning about real estate when I was 16. I was, um, you know, kind of getting into trading stocks, uh, just the idea of passive income really, really fascinated me. And, you know, I come from humble beginnings and I was working as a dishwasher at a very young age. And, um, you know, just like the idea of having my money work for me, you know, even though at the time I didn't have any money, uh, I just thought of the idea of, you know, having money come to your mailbox every month was awesome. So, um, you know, I started I went down the trading stocks route. I, st I uh, really taught, I taught myself how to trade. Uh, I was day trading for a while, swing trading, doing all that sort of thing. Um, and I kind of did that until I was like, you know, on and off and I never really made any money. Um, it was more of a hobby thing. And up until I, I believe I was like 20 years old. Um, but I used to work as a, I eventually graduated to being a server at a restaurant and I was making some great money working at a local, um, a French restaurant and you know due to the law of attraction I kind of digressed from the server and I went into uh, the corporate world due to I strongly believe in the law of attraction at the time I, I, I wanted to be in the corporate environment at 9 to 5 I know most people are running away from the 9 to 5 nowadays but uh, I, I wanted to get into the 9 to 5 um, because you know it's where I come from you know a lot of people are working like my mom was a housekeeper, you know, my uncles work in construction, my, my family pretty much just, um, you know, was, uh, you know, blue collar workers. And um, I, I wanted to get into the 95. So, you know, I start working for this corporation um, called the National Kidney Registry. And they primarily had me watching uh, commercial flights overnight. And, um, you know, because of that, they, they needed somebody to stay up during the night and, and watch these organs being transported from point A to point B. And I started there, you know, making little to no money. And um, I progressed to become four years later, the operations manager. And I was making uh, my first year where I made six figures. And then I quit that job to get into wholesaling. That's great. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can already tell that you are, you know, you kind of have that entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I mean, just, just, going from stocks and then going into being a server and then jumping, wanting to jump into the nine to five, knowing that this is your stepping stone, you know, yeah. um, you know, just not, not being stuck. And then, cause I think a lot of people nowadays kind of, I don't know, for, for whatever reason they look down on the, the nine to five, I think it has to do something with yeah. like the four hour work week or something, but <laughs> maybe, but you, yeah. <laughs> but you knew like, okay, this is going to get me out of being a server. I'm going to get some, uh, you know, some right. corporate experience. And then from there, making the leap into real estate. So bring us up yeah. to, to that point. Um, let's, let's talk about the first deal, you know, kind of, yeah. um, break it down, give us, uh, you know, kind of a brief breakdown, how that unfolded and then, you know, I'll have some follow-up questions for you. Yeah. So in September of 22, just a little bit of background, I, uh, you know, I, I got into it for primarily a whole year I was, I was watching Pace Morby. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm just taking in content online. I'm learning about, you know, creative financing. I'm learning because I, I initially wanted to invest myself. I never really, I didn't even knew, I didn't even know what wholesaling was. Um, and I'm learning about the creative finance and Pace Morby's teaching about wholesaling as well. So I'm like, Oh, this is pretty cool. And I kind of 
realized that could be my entry into real estate while making an income learn the business learn how to um you know how everything works while also being able to generate income for myself so i was like wholesaling is like the perfect way to get my foot in the door um and then i was watching this one video by pace morby where he's talking about the different avatars of real estate you know you have the integrator the, uh, the visionary and i'm like well you know I, I think my skill set, what I know is that integrator stuff, you know, like I'm very good with streamlining systems. I'm very good at, um, you know, building systems, um, very good at just working on, um, you know, Excel sheets, that sort of stuff. So, you know, I just put it out there. I went on the face on the Pace Morby's group, uh, the, the free uh, creative finance group. And I'm like, hey, these are my skill sets. This is where I work now. Um, I'd love to help, you know, a, uh, an investor uh, for free. I'll help you build out your systems. I'll help you grow your company. Um, and then, you know, I've got a bunch of people that reached out to me, but no one that actually knew what they were doing. And then Tyler Wyatt, my current uh, business partner, he reached out as well. And he's like, well, you know, I've, I've invested a ton of money into, um, into real estate uh, mentorships. I've done one flip in the past with a different partner, but that partnership kind of fell through. And, um, you know, like I'm, I'm looking for somebody like yourself because I want to build this, this big, wholesale company i'm looking for somebody to partner with that has the experience that you have and the skills that you have and i was like oh perfect i mean i'm looking for somebody that has some um you know some experience you don't have to have a lot of experience just know a little bit right of knowledge where, where i can learn somebody that i can learn from um and so we kind of complemented each other in that way where i brought value into this relationship and he brought value to the relationship and we and we started a business so our first deal where we made five grand um was actually from networking that he had already been doing prior to our relationship. So when we started working together, um, I believe I quit my job. It was September. Yeah, I think it was August, September. Um, full, when I started full time, it was toward the end of September. And, you know, he had already been networking with some buyers in the area and other wholesalers. And, you know, when I started this deal from this um, 91 properties, I think was the name of the, the wholesaling group where he, brought the deal to us and he's like hey do you guys want to buy this because he thought we were buying it and we're like well we're not going to buy it ourselves but we know somebody that's very interested and so we put them together we, we go walk the property you know with uh with our buyer and with them and we're like it's kind of a funny story because tyler tells me he's like you know he had to force the negotiation he's like so how much are you going to pay for it how much are you willing to sell it for and um you know it was like he was kind of had to kind of force the that deal to happen almost because there just wasn't a lot of meat on the bone on that one and uh, they finally come to an agreement and we're like, well, how are we going to get paid? <laughs> so then, you know, the buyer didn't want to pay us because he's like, well, you guys aren't realtors, so I can't pay you a commission. We're like, well, you know, that's not really how it works. You would, you would pay an assignment, but because it was a JV, the the partner, um, you know, we decided to kind of split that JV assignment deal. And um, I think it ended up being like, you know, they made 10 grand and we made five or made, they made 15 and we made five or something like that. We came up with a, with a split there. That's great. Yeah. It's, but, it's crazy. But, um, I guess just all from a post, you know, it's kind of like, if you think back from that yeah. now, like if you didn't put yourself out there and just, and like you said, provide value, start with providing value. I'll do this. I'll do this for you for free, you know, and, yeah. and if, now that leads to you guys teaming up. That leads to you getting your first deal. And then now you're, you're building out a business, um, from there. And yeah, what's great is, uh, you know, I, I, we kind of mentioned this when we first talked, um, off the podcast, but I'm getting into the integrator side as well. So maybe you could kind of, um, lead people, um, let them know kind of the systems that you guys have set up now that you're starting to work more together yeah. as far as lead follow up and everything like that. Yeah, sure. So it's actually uh, pretty funny. The first couple of months we were working, we were trying to use Podio. We were trying to be cost effective and it cost us a lot of money. Because, uh, you know, we're using the system, you know, when we started, I'm like, hey, I've got some money to invest. How about I throw uh, 2500 bucks and we do a direct mail campaign? Let's see what happens. Let's get some leads to play with. So we do that and then we get a ton of leads in. Like great response rate from this uh, marketing campaign. And but we're putting 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 everybody in the in a podio and we don't have a follow up system. I don't really know what I'm doing. 
I'm, you know, people are calling in. I'm answering the phone. Um, you know, my partner Tyler is answering the phone. We're kind of all over the place, and we really have no follow. And there's so many leads in there that we just, you know, some are serious, some are not. And there's no way for us to track like who have we contacted and when are we going to contact the next? Like, what's the next step? That was the biggest thing. Was like, what's the next step for each lead? Um, and just keeping track of all that. And Podio, I was spending so much time trying to customize it and like curate it into our own little system that it, I, I just wasted so much time uh, building this system where I could have been on the phones um, closing deals um, and kind of, you know, increasing my uh, skill set in that area. Um, but in January now, you know, we switched over to this new system called Resimply. We moved all of our deals, uh, all of our leads over into uh, Resimply, and it has literally changed the game for us because they provide us with um, uh, customizable drip campaigns that we can set individually for each lead. And so, you know, for this lead, I'll set a drip campaign that says, you know, set a task for Andre to call uh, the lead tomorrow. Two days after that, send a text message. The day after that, uh, Tyler's going to call him or Andre's going to call him again. Two days after that, send a text message. Uh, one day after that, send an email if there's an email on file. Um, so having that right there, we allowed us to close a bunch of the leads that we had in our Podio system that were would have fallen through the cracks if we didn't have that follow-up system and that um, that whole system in place, which was Resimply. So, you know, we got a ton of leads that came in that first week of me like being full-time in the business ton of leads come in we mess it up like we you know we're we've, we're trying to do different things and and a bunch of leads just fall through the cracks i mean we and now once we put them in recent we started following up with them um we closed i think it was like three or four deals now off of that campaign or scheduled to close totally we have a total of four including some that we closed so yeah follow-up is is key man like in having the right system from the beginning i would say definitely invest the money to get the right system that allows you to do the things that you need in this business. Cause sales is all about follow-up, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think you're right. I think when you're first starting out, you're, you're trying to keep your overhead low, especially depending on what your situation yeah. is. You don't want to invest um, too much. You don't know how long that first deal is going to take till you get paid back. So you're thinking, you know, yeah. I gotta, I gotta try and maybe even, even as, as, like stuff with like data, you know, you try to skip on like data and like pay, you know, like a little amount, but you end up spending more in the long run because you're not yeah. getting quality stuff. So I think the same goes for the CRM. Yeah. Um. So that that's definitely great yeah. for for new newbies to hear. And, you know. Yeah. And what I'd say too, like you see a lot of people that they just everybody wants to post about their successes, right? The people that make their first deal in the, in a week, they start wholesaling. The next week, they uh, close a deal. And uh, it just for for most of us, at least from my personal experience, that's just not how it happened. Um, you know, our first real deal where Tyler and I were working together, it was we spent it was about two months after we partnered and we really um, started working together. And after we sent that campaign out where we closed one deal and we pretty much made two thousand dollars, you know, typically when people are posting online. They're seeing, you know, a ten thousand dollar return their first week, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar assignment checks, like a week into wholesaling. And um, I mean, full transparency, that's what I was thinking in my head. I'm like, I'm gonna quit my job next month. I'm gonna be, you know, making fifty thousand dollars, and it's just not how it works. Um, you know, you, it really takes a lot more than you think. Um, and you know, what I'd say for people starting off is um, just it takes money to. You can do it with no money, right? You can. People have done it, and uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. What I'm saying is I will be prepared to spend money in order to start this business. If you want to do it the right way and you want to actually build a business, you're going to need money. Um, and especially for things like a CRM that actually works um, for investing in, in a campaign. Yeah. I mean, right there, that's that's going to save you thousands of dollars and hours of headache. That's the whole reason, um, you know, we started this podcast was to sort of share with uh, new people or even people that have been doing it in a while and still haven't gotten their first deal. And, and it can seem like a million miles away. So the words that you just shared is exactly why we started this. So it can motivate people yeah. and, and you can give them, you know, the heads up at least because, um, you'll, you'll see stuff on, 
YouTube and it sometimes it can make it seem like it's a lot easier than it is, but um, it's, I mean, they do say you got to be consistent, but just to hear you say like, it wasn't what I thought. And, and, you know, just, just to, for people to hear that it's, it's okay to have those thoughts. And I guess, yeah, what, what's the biggest advice? What, what kept you motivated um, during the, you know, times when it felt like it wasn't going your way? Yeah. Well, having that business partner um, there and holding, you know, having him kind of be like almost my accountability partner, you know, and me kind of being almost like his accountability partner, you know, um, really helped because like some days where you wake up and especially when you're a business owner and, you know, you're used to having to go to a job and like you got to be there at nine o'clock. Now you wake up like, well, I could decide to just stay in bed, sleep in today, but then like I have Tyler or the team now that like, okay, I need to be responsible and show up. I got to show up for the team. I got to show up for Tyler. Now it's not just about me anymore. You know, having that is what has been critical for me. And I think it's been very important for Tyler as well. Just having that, this partnership that we can bounce ideas off of each other. We can, you know, keep each other motivated. Even if there is no money coming into the account, we're like, well, what are we going to do? Right? Like having that person there to really, um, work through stuff has has been very important and full transparency like if it wasn't for him or having that partnership i believe that he could have done the business without me and i'm pretty sure like i think i could have done this business without him but we could never achieve what we're going to achieve without having each other and and what i was gonna initially say was just full transparency like i probably would have given up by this point if like if it was really like this hard to achieve what we've done so far and if I was by myself, I, I think I would have given up by now. Wow, that's that's powerful. And that's one thing I really like about uh, Pace's community and some of the other mentorships is they do create um, a community. And so you yeah. can reach out to people, even if you don't know anybody in real estate, because that's what happens with a lot of people. You're coming from a different industry. You don't know anybody yeah. in real estate. Get into these Facebook groups and make a post just like Andre did. And now you, you're you going to have a partnership where you guys are going to be making millions and millions and millions together. It's like, yeah, it's, it's actually crazy. I was just mm -hmm. down at his house and I'm staying in his guest house. Um, and like, we're like best friends now. It's, it's so funny how that happened. I believe so much in the law of attraction. It's, it's how I believe that because of the law of attraction is how I was able to get to a six figure income in a corporate, uh, job. It's why I was able to partner with Tyler in this, and and it's why I'm going to build a, a multi million dollar business. That's it, man. It's like it's your your mindset yeah. is already like light years ahead of so many people. Um, what Thank sort you. of advice would you give to somebody who you know hasn't taken any action yet? They're just they're consuming content, they're analyzing, they want to jump in, they don't know where to start. What do you yeah. tell them? Um just got to commit. I mean, you know, that, that's something that, um, I've had Grant Cardone kind of drill into my head for a long time is like commit. Cause for a long time, I've had like the shiny object syndrome, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do day, day trading. Oh no, I'm going to do wholesaling. Oh, I'm going to go do drop shipping, whatever. Like you just got to understand where your goals are and think long term, like 10 years from now, what are my goals 10 years from now? And what vehicle am I going to use to get there? Just choose one. Anything will work. And um, just choose something. I've always been interested in real estate. So the whole set, when the wholesaling thing came up, I'm like, well, this kind of fits into that 10 year vision. And um, it just, that I'm just going to choose this view. I'm, I got to commit. I'm just going to jump in with both feet, you know? And that's why I was just confident enough to, to quit my job and to just do it because now granted I had, I had some money saved up, right. To, so that I can live for quite a while. If this thing doesn't work out, you, you know, I've had my little bit of a safety net there. Um, not much, but <laughs> something. Um, but I just think you just got to commit and you just got to do it. And if it doesn't work out, you know, you can always get another job and then you can always recommit again, do something else. I like that commitment thing has been so critical in my life. Um, even when it comes to relationships, when it comes to business, like you just got to commit. And, um, if you made the wrong decision, then, you know, that's life. You just pivot. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Um, so tell me now, sort of now that you got this partnership, um, you guys are building something great here. 
take me into the future now. What are you guys planning on doing this year? You know, the next five years, have you guys thought that far or at least, you know, what, yeah. what do you plan on doing, but by the end of the year? Yeah. So we've got this huge goal that we want to do. Like we want to build a $50 million business. We look up to a lot of people like Carlos Reyes, um, you know, Pace Morby, um, Jason Palliser. Um, you know, we have these mentors that uh, we really look up to. But for this year specifically, you know, we've been doing this for what, five months now? We started back in September and we're February now. Um, and so about five months. And, you know, our first like three or four months, just not a lot of activity. September, we closed that one deal. And that was because Tyler was already um, networking and doing all that. So we closed one deal. And then in October, we closed that deal for $2,000, which for me, like, it, it that doesn't excite me very much, right? So I'm like, $2,000, is that even really a deal? But it is because the amount that we learned while for that $2,000, they always say, you know, the, the smallest assignment fees are usually like the most work you have to do. And I can s preach and say that that's very true. Um, the more money, typically the bigger assignment fees is actually less work. Um, it, it just works funny like that. But October, we closed our second, it was October, November. And then December, we don't close anything. And then January, we don't close anything. And then February, after we had implemented ReSimply in this new follow-up system, now we're closing, uh, we have five uh, deals, four scheduled to close, no, one closed, three more scheduled to close this month and then another one for March. So out of nowhere, we get five deals um, and we're scheduled to uh, make, I think it's, you know, close to 40,000 this year. If everything goes right, cross our fingers, right? Everything goes smoothly. Oh, something always comes up. Um, plenty of deals have already fallen through because of, you know, just things that happen. It's just part of the game. Um, but our goals for this year by March, we want to be making $50,000 a month. And I'm very confident that we can hit that, especially with the uh, money that we reinvested into uh, marketing and with our new systems that we set up. But our 2023 goals, we want to hit a run rate of 150,000 a month. Um, and you know, in the back of our heads, just a little bit of an ego thing. Like I want to make my first million dollars this year. And uh, I'm very confident that we can do that. Let's go. Love it. Um, what about, um, so marketing, you, you touched on marketing a little bit. What are you guys doing? Yeah. What are you, what are you seeing that is, that's working? And then where, what are you guys going to implement anything new? Yeah. So, uh, our first marketing campaign back in, uh, September was a direct mail check. So what we did is we pulled prop stream. We got a ton of, you know, prop stream will give you the estimated value for what the house is worth. So what we did is we took 80% of that estimated value and we just put it on some checks with a window envelope. So we just mailed out like 2,500 um, absentee owners. Um, I think it was absentee owners older than 2000. And there was one more criteria. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, hit me up and I'll give you the exact criteria that we uh, direct mailed. But we sent out 2,500 and I think like as of today, we probably have like 100, 150 leads that came from that initial campaign. And, you know, we kind of messed up and a lot of those, like we didn't, I didn't know what I was doing when we first started. We were trying to do these, you know, all these different things. I didn't know what I was doing. We didn't have the right systems. A lot of those leads fell to the cracks. Um, and then after we implemented, we were able to secure some of them back. Um, I think three of those five uh, deals that I talked about earlier was from this campaign specifically. So, um, you know, the checks really worked. We got a great response rate. And unfortunately, we didn't know what we were doing when we hit it. But it was great. You know, it was the money invested in the experience. We spent $2,500, but we learned so much by doing it that I don't regret it one single bit. Um, our next campaign, and then we, we sent the postcard recently that didn't really, I think we spent $1,500 on, on postcards and uh, didn't really generate much out of that. Um, but our net, what we're doing now is we just want to reinvest into the direct mail we've been cold calling this entire time you know but the cold calling hasn't been working as well for us as it does for a lot of other people um i believe it's it's uh because we're just not investing enough lists enough lists and, and skip tracing enough you know we'll skip trace about ten thousand records a month and i feel like that's not enough you know for the results we're getting um so you know we really want to reinvest our money into what we know has worked 
at least in our market, which was uh, the direct mails. And hopefully in the near future, I either want to do some SMS campaigns, um, SEO leads, maybe even some Facebook marketing. Um, I got to decide what we're going to do. But as our budget increases, we'll be able to play around with more marketing. Love it. Yeah, it's kind of, I think that's a, that's a good way to start is kind of, you know, hone in on one thing, get that rolling and then start implementing, yeah. you know, different streams for leads. I love the idea of the check. I haven't, I, I mean, maybe that's out there. I haven't seen yeah. that. I know the postcards and then the, the, the yellow pad I've seen those, but the check yeah. for some reason, that just seems like you'd get a lot of yeah. hits from that. We did uh, shout out to Corey Meeker over at a uh, REI print mail. I think it was REI print mail is his website. Definitely check him out. Tell him Audrey sent you, um, you know, he really helped us out and get our first campaign out. Um, and, you know, it just, it, it worked out really well. We got a great return. That's why we're looking to do it again. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. Now, um, is there anyone that you want to shout out? I mean, as far as like mentors, friends, or people that kind of helped you, you know, during this whole process, um, you know, you're six months in, who who's the biggest people you want to shout out? Well, definitely my business partner, Tyler Wyatt, you know, you know, without him, like I said, I don't think we'd be able to reach our goals or my personal goals that I've kind of put for myself. Um, you know, definitely my fiance without her, without her being my rock, if you will, like, you know, like just being that person that when I'm feeling down on myself, just gives me confidence. Like, like when I'm like, babe, I don't know if I can do this. And she's like, it'll work out. I'm like, how can you be so confident? She's like, ah, you know it'll work out like you, you got this. And then like just having that person give you that boost of confidence um, and just really believe in you and like having a close person really believe in you, I got to tell you has really been helpful. Um, and, you know, also my, uh, my colleagues at my uh, old job, you know, they were all super supportive of me transitioning. And although they were very upset and it was going to put a lot more work on them, at least in the short term, uh, you know, they were all super happy that I was going to, pursuing something um, that was important to me. So having their support was also great. And yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. Seems like you're, you're surrounding yourself with, uh, you know, people that believe in you, which is yeah, definitely huge, especially on those days where you're, you know, kind of feeling down, but um, I almost forgot my, uh, my mentor, Brandon, Brandon Godoris. He's also been very um, important. He kind of helps me a lot of accountability stuff. Okay. And, um, you know, he's been super helpful and um, just making me think bigger and making me think more long term. You know, like he's the one that initially helped me, I think, two or three years ago, set my 10 year visions and um, like start thinking like bigger, you know. Yeah. So shout out to Brandon. Wow, that's huge, man. Like, I don't think people realize how important that is to have somebody like that that one you look up to and then also to keep you accountable and keep you thinking big because uh, for some yeah. reason we just, we're like, we'll be fine with like, Oh, I'll be good. If I make like $10,000 a month, he's like, no, no, like, go bigger, go bigger, go yeah. bigger, go bigger. And um, yeah. even if you don't hit that, you at least come close. You know, you're going to be, you're going to be pumped on that. Yeah. You know, I just, uh, I just heard a quote from Alex Hermosi. He said, um, you have to be, reminded more than you have to be taught and that's a quote that i've had in my head for a little while now because a lot of times you're like oh i already know that you know especially when you the think big thing sometimes like yeah sure you could think big for a week a month but you got to be constantly doing that you got to be constantly working on that like and that's almost like everything in life you got to constantly be putting work towards that thing or else it just falls to the sideline a lot of people they're you know they say oh i already know that or i already done that you got to do it again. You got to, you got to remember it. You got to have it at the top of mind. It just, especially when it comes to thinking big um, and um, you know, just working on yourself, you just got to keep doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Wow. That's some nuggets right there. Y'all. Um, okay. So we're kind of, we're kind of near in the end. Um, I, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, um, send this to somebody brand new because basically that's, that's why we created this podcast. Um, because that first deal, it can seem a million miles away, but chances are it's right around the corner. So don't let them quit. Just keep them motivated. If you have someone in your life that is uh, brand new to real estate or hasn't got their first deal yet, send this to them, share Andre's story, you know, his words of wisdom and um how can people partner with you you know if they have deals let people know what market you're in and how they can yeah. partner with you 
Yeah, we're we're only in Columbus, Georgia right now in the in that River City market right there. Um uh, Phoenix City uh and Columbus, Georgia. Um and all the little cities in the River Cities right there. Um you can reach out to my email if you have a deal ac at uncommonrei.com or just go on our website uncommonrei.com or just reach out to me on Instagram. That's primarily where uh you'd probably get a hold of me. When that's Andre underscore BR97, Andre underscore BR97. So nice. just reach out. Yep. And I'm always available. Have, there you go. We're going to have that all in the show notes and then as well, you know, just kind of overlaid on the screen so people can definitely hit you up. So I want you guys to do that. Go show Andre some love right after this and send him your deals, you know, and let's, uh, let's, let's get you guys squatting up with him and his partner, Tyler. Okay. Now go ahead, take us home. Give us one piece of advice you would give yourself before you got that first deal under your belt. Yeah. Um, I would say don't worry so much about the money, the assignment fee, what that's going to be. Cause you know, everybody wants to boast about their $10,000, $50,000 assignment. But at first, like just, just get your foot in the door. Um, I believe so much in just getting your foot in there and just doing it and just learning. Um, like our first deal, we only made five grand. Our second deal, we made 2000 Our third deal, we made 5,000. Like we weren't, we weren't making a lot of money, but we learned so much in the process that the little deals that causes the most work really taught us so much and allowed us to grow and allowed us to position ourselves to be able to grow exponentially now. So my advice to anyone starting off is just, just get your foot in the door, just commit and just start doing, um, you know, don't worry so much about the little details. Like you're going to mess up. You're going to, you're going to mess it up. You might mess up the whole deal. You might even lose the deal, but just do it anyways. Lose the deal. Just mess up. Just get it done. You'll learn. Exactly, exactly man. Wow, that's perfect. That's a perfect way to end it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Andre, thank you so much for joining me today. And Thank um, you, Alex. Let's, let's link you. up and, and do some deals together. Let's do some deals, brother. All right, man. Talk soon.